just uh, want to say uh, for especially if uh, folks are online, we apologize for the late start. However, we had uh, some uh, business that we had to take care of before we come um, out in the public. So thank you for your patience. Um, and with that said, I have um, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, that we stand for our land acknowledgement and our national anthem. The land upon which we work, live, and sustain ourselves is the ancestral and treaty lands of the Michizagig and Nishinaabe, also known today as the Mississaugas of the Kredi, the rightful caretakers and title holders of this land. We also recognize the rich pre-contact history and relationships, which include the Anishinaabe and the Ongwe Hongwe. Since European contact, this land continues to be home to indigenous and non-indigenous peoples. As responsible community members, we value the diversity, dignity, and worth of all people. Colonialism displaced and dispossessed indigenous peoples of their ancestral land. And continues to deny their basic human rights, dignities, and freedoms. We are committed to learning true history to reconcile, make reparations, and fulfill our treaty obligations to the original peoples and our collective responsibilities to the land, water, animals, and each other for future generations. Thank you. You may be seated. Just before I have the uh, ask for approval of the agenda tonight, I just want to congratulate one of my colleagues and uh, uh, ask everyone to join me in wishing Trustee Bailey a happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Trustee Bailey. Uh, we, we won't ask you how old you are, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. So you have the agenda before you. I have no addition to the agenda. I'm going to ask Trustee Hoff and Trustee uh, Feminelli to uh, move the agenda for me, please. All those in favor? Carries. Thank you. I move right down to uh, declaration of conflict of interest. Any? See none. Um, I have no uh, cheers announcement tonight. Um, and move down to uh, seven. And I have no uh, trustee report that appointed to external organizations. Then I'm going to move right down to uh, budget 2023-24. Uh, uh, All right. Okay. So. Let me just take my time and get some documents in. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. I am pleased uh, to present the 2023-24 proposed balance budget totaling two billion eight uh, thirty-eight million two hundred and twenty-two uh, thousand three hundred and eighty for the Peel District School Board. This budget supports the board unwavering commitment to building an anti-racist and anti-oppressive, inclusive and equitable education system that 
put our student achievement at the forefront and to be continue implementing of the ministry directives. Preparing a budget of this magnitude required tremendous efforts. And I know that the staff worked diligently for months, collecting input from the system and community, ensuring that our funding priorities are aligned with our system goals and that student learning is top priority. Thank you uh, to, to all the staff who uh, is so diligently in getting this accomplished. I would also like to thank the finance support uh, service team for their hard work um, and their uh, tremendous oversight in preparing up this 2023-24 budget. As we are all aware, for the past three years, we have been experiencing decline in enrollment, a trend we have seen across the province and across the country uh, post-COVID. To help address these challenges, the ministry has continued to supplement funding in areas impacted by immigration in addition to introducing new funding frameworks for student transportation, math support, and for indigenous education to support continued focus and truth and reconciliation. The ministry has also adjusted staff benchmark in the line with collective bargain obligation and recognize influence uh, pressures by increasing non-staff in benchmark by 2%. As in prior year, we employed a rigorous consulting process in developing the 2023-24 budget, a process that include employee group leaders, the senior team and trustees, as well as input from parents, guardians, school council members, student community members and staff through um, an online survey. Guided by our consultation process, priorities was placed and supporting our most vulnerable student, our ongoing equity, anti-racism and anti-oppressive initiative, transportation costs increase and addressing increased cost pressure due to inflation. With our operating budget focusing on meeting programs delivery, the board is seeking and asking to approve the use of 27,238,101 uh, from our reserve to support the board's operating shortfall as well as the ongoing and one-time Enhancements that support student well-being and achievements. With a focus on such um, important uh, support for students, we are readying for a year of inspiration, greater collaboration, practice learning, experience an endless opportunity for our students to flourish. I would like to take this time to recognize the contribution of the senior team, employees group, and fellow trustees throughout the process, as well as the community member, parents, guardians, school councils, students, and staff who took the time to provide budget input throughout our online survey. I would now like to introduce and welcome our director to make a few remarks. Director Stroop. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Chair Green. And through you, I would like to make some remarks here. I'm pleased to present the 2023-2024 proposed balanced budget of 2,038,222,380 dollars for the Peel District School Board. This budget supports the board's unwavering commitment to student achievement, equity anti-racism, anti-oppression, and the continued implementation of ministry directives. Over the last three years, the board has experienced enrollment decline. As enrollment numbers have been impacted provincially post-COVID, the ministry has continued to supplement funding in areas impacted by immigration. The ministry has also introduced new funding framework for student transportation to address cost pressures and for indigenous education to support continued focus on truth and reconciliation. 
Additionally, the ministry has adjusted staffing benchmarks in line with collective bargaining obligations and recognized inflationary pressures by increasing non-staffing benchmarks by 2%. Given the challenges within the educational sector, the board undertook a rigorous budget process. The 2023-2024 budget was developed through a consultation process that included employee group leaders, the senior leadership team and trustees. The board also sought inputs from parents, guardians, school council members, students, community members, and staff through an online survey, while opportunity to delegate was provided through the physical planning, finance, and building com committee. Given funding constraints, priority was placed on supporting our most vulnerable students. Our ongoing equity, anti-racism, and anti-oppression initiatives, transportation cost increases, and addressing increased cost pressures due to inflation. Guided by our consultation process and ministry directives, the 2023-2024 budget enhancements have been outlined in Appendix 1 of the Budget Book. With our operating budget focused on meeting program delivery, the Board is requested to approve the use of $27,238,121 from reserves to support the Board's operating shortfall. The Board's student-focused budget for 2023-2024 demonstrates our commitment to fiscal responsibility geared towards supporting student excellence and achievement in the classroom. My gratitude goes to the senior team and trustees for their contributions and support towards efficiency, to those community members, parents, and staff who provided budget input through our online survey, and to the finance support services team for their diligence and expertise in creating this year's budget book. Thank you. Thank you, Director Sru. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Director Sru, could you um, introduce uh, Associate Director Gill uh, to, to walk us through the overview of the budget? Or... Thank you. And through you, Chair Green, I will now ask Associate Director Jasper Gill to present the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Director Spru, and through you, Chair uh, Green. Before I start with my presentation, I want to acknowledge the commitment and leadership of the senior team to develop this proposed budget. I would also like to thank Controller Leticia Charles and our finance staff for their outstanding work over the last four months in the development of this budget. For school boards, enrollment is key driver for staffing, determining accommodation needs, and most of the ministry funding is based on enrollment, normally referred to as average daily enrollment or ADE. The graph shows the enrollment trend over the last 12 years. Our board has experienced enrollment growth until the year 2019-20 except in 2015-16 school year. The huge jump in, enroll in enrollment in 2014-15 year is due to the fact that all full-day kindergarten students were included in ADE calculation as full-time students and were fully funded as part of the grants for student needs funding. For 2023-24 school year, Enrollment projections indicate that the elementary panel will see a decline of 1,721 students and the secondary panel a decline of 394 students. Overall, our system will see a decline of 2,115 students compared to last year's estimates, which represents a 1.4% decline. Since 2019-20 school year, the board's overall enrollment has declined by 7,942 students, representing a 5.1% decline.
Each year, normally in the spring, the ministry announces the grants for student needs for the following school year. Most of the ministry funding comes to school boards through the grants for student needs. For the 2023-24 school year, overall provincially, the grants for student needs funding is projected to be 27.1 billion, an increase of 2.7% compared to 2022-23 school year. Per pupil, base funding will increase to $13,125. So as part of the grants for student needs announcement, ministry introduced the changes to the funding it provides to school boards. Some of the specific changes being implemented for 2023-24 include to support access to online learning opportunities for students, there will be funding to support the cost associated with the salaries and benefits of administrative staff, such as principals, vice principal, office staff, and technology. There will be funding for additional professional, paraprofessional, and educational assistant staff to support the well being of students. The ministry is implementing a new funding framework for student transportation grant with the aim to achieve a more equitable and needs-based student transportation system. As a result, our board's student transportation funding for 2023-24 year will increase by 7.1 million. The ministry is realigning, realigning funding for the indigenous education grant to better support indigenous education priorities. Our board share of this funding will increase by 5.4 million next year. Over the last couple of years, the ministry has provided temporary additional funding as part of the COVID-19 pandemic funds for school boards to hire additional staff. This funding will be discontinued next year. Our share of this funding for 22-23 year, which is this year, is 20.5 20 million. <clears throat> Ministry will continue to provide declining enrollment allocation to allow school boards time to adjust cost structure to reflect declines in enrollment. Our board will receive approximately 4.4 million next year as part of this allocation. Due to the extraordinary and temporary decline in recent immigrant enrollment, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the ministry will continue to provide mitigation funding to supplement the recent immigrant component of the English as a second language allocation. Our board's allocation is approximately seven million as part of this funding. Salary benchmarks and other funding elements will be updated to reflect changes as per the recently negotiated central collector agreements, as well as funds set aside for future agreements. Ministry will also continue to provide student support funds for additional staffing to support the local learning needs of students. All funds to be used consistent with collective agreement obligations. Our board share of this funding is approximately 15.5 million. <clears throat> the next year GSN will also include there will be a 2% cost update to assist school boards in managing the increase in commodity prices such as hydro, natural gas, insurance, and other costs. Ministry will also continue to provide funding to support the increased costs related to the need to run ventilation systems longer and to replace filters more frequently. In addition to that, Ministry will also continue with the implementation of the multi-year changes it introduced in previous years. The online and in-person learning credit load benchmarks will be updated to reflect the differentiated funding for online learners 
for secondary students. Benefit benchmarks will be further reduced due to the phase out of the retirement categories. This will be the final year of the phase out. Ministry will continue with the phase in of updates to school facilities operations and renewal grant to reflect a secondary class size of 23. This will be the final year of the phase in. And finally, to streamline funding, some of the priority and partnership funding allocations will be transferred into the GSNN in 23-24 year. So based on the consultation with trustees, senior administration, and the input received from various unions, federations, school councils, and, and the public, staff has developed a proposed balanced budget. Given funding constraints, priority was placed on supporting equity work, strengthening student learning, enhancing sports for mental health, and special education and the ongoing implementation of the ministerial directives. The next two slides highlight some of the enhancements included in the proposed budget. 121 educational assistance to support students with special needs, as well as students transitioning into mainstream due to the closing of some of the contained classes. 46 additional teachers to support special education needs at the school level. 27 resource teachers to support schools and students for equity programs and initiatives, as well as to work with schools to build capacity to create positive relationships, learning environments, and build a sense of community and belonging. Proposed, proposed budget includes additional teachers to work directly with students to provide early sports to prepare students in grades seven and eight prior to transitioning into a de-streaming grade nine and to continue to support students in a de-stream grade nine and their transition to grade nine, uh, 10. Proposed budget also includes additional teachers to work one-on-one -on -one or in small groups with students in kindergarten to grade three to support more, to provide more support in, in, in reading. There is one dedicated teacher for an off-site school within a college program in partnership with Sheldon College for students who may be disengaged and or require a mature college environment to achieve academic success as they transition to post-secondary education. One additional graduation coach to work in secondary schools to support the learning and well-being needs of Black, African, Afro-Caribbean students. A coordinator and two resource teachers for Center of Black Excellence to ensure the programs provided at the center aligned with the Black student success strategy and to create resources that support students in schools and promote their success in post-secondary opportunities. Additional two social workers and one behavior consultant to reduce caseloads for existing staff so that more support can be provided to students and families. The budget also includes a community engagement consultant and two student advisors to strengthen connections with the local First Nation, Métis and Inuit parents and communities and to work directly with indigenous students and their family to ensure students engagement, success and well-being. One pension analyst to meet new OMER's pension requirements and to ensure that the board is compliant under the Pension Act. The budget also includes additional funding of 875,000 for supplies and services in the facilities area to cover cost increases due to inflation. There is also additional funding of 5.1 million to cover student transportation cost increases due to increase in service contracts and fuel costs. To look into the funding shortfall in, in special education. This slide shows the funding gap 
for the last five years. In 2023-24, the funding gap is projected to increase to 33.8 million as the needs for special education students continue to grow. Over the last five years, the funding has increased by 5.2%, and at the same time, the expenses, our expenses, have increased by 13.5%, resulting in a projected gap of approximately 33.8 million for the 2023-24 uh, school year. If we look at our operating expenditures by area, approximately 79% are directly related to school expenditures. 5% are related to central schools for schools, 8.3% are related to facilities, 3.2% related to student transportation, and 4.7% related to administration. Now, if we look at operating expenditure by type of expenditure, 82% of the expenditures are related to staff salaries and benefit costs. 11.5% are related to non-staffing costs. 1.1% related to interest charges on our long-term capital debt, and 5% related to the amortization of our capital assets. Looking further into the staffing cost, approximately 55% are related to teachers, 9.3% to educational assistants and early childhood educators, 3.7% to principals and vice principals, 2.1% related to school office for staff, 2.7% to PSSB staff, 5.2% related to custodial and maintenance staff, and 3.8% related to trustees, board administration, directors, superintendents, and transportation staff. Looking further into non-staffing costs, 2.9% of the costs are related to student transportation, 1.5% to facilities maintenance, another 1.4% related to school supplies, 1.5% related to technology, 1.4% to utility costs, and 0.6% related to administration, and 1.2% of these costs are related to school generated funds. So this slide compares per people funding of large urban boards. Our boards per people amount next year will increase to $10,532 next year. This is, this is here for your information. So, so thank you, uh, Chair Green, and, and I'm happy to respond to any questions. Uh, thank you, Associate Director Gill. I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Cameron and Trustee Clark just to put this on the floor so we can go now to question. Any question or comments from Trustee? I'm going to start down to my right. Trustee Johal. Uh, I just uh, through you, Chair, want to thank. Um, A.D. Saroop and uh, additional director Jaspal Gill for their hard work and focused work on this detailed presentation. This is a wonderful budget, and I have no further questions. Thank you. Yeah, through you, Chair. Um, you know, uh, you and I have been in the board 20 years and seen a balanced budget through those uh, 20 years. I think this is, though, the most toughest one because we've de uh, digged in uh, into our reserves the most, uh, obviously facing uh, challenges. Uh, and every year it marvels me how uh, our great finance department, uh, department now led by you, Associate Director Gill and your great staff, how amazing you do this budget and, and listen to everyone and try to do the best you can uh, with uh, such tight, um, uh, constraints on, on what we can do. And, and I think you've highlighted two interesting areas in your presentation. Um, first of all, the, uh, the 11% of non-salary. That is where uh, the government has not properly funded us for inflation. 
and has provided uh, a lot of the, um, they're taking a lot of our money away from, from which we could put into a classroom and support our students, um, as well as the, the special education uh, um, overfunding or underfunding, I guess you should call it the underfunding and overspending of our part uh, of 33 million. Um, it seems to always be this way. It started 20 years ago. We were either, it was either spe uh, special education or transportation was uh, the, the true overspenders. And we have to come up with money from other areas to, to fund that. And if you could have another 33 million, we could certainly spend that in, in great places. So I know as trustees, we've had to make some tough decisions uh, of setting budget priorities and and we saw them being presented today. And I, I'm very proud of the work that everyone has done from trustees to my colleagues to also, again, I, I can't iterate to Director Saroop and Associate Director Gil, how great a job you've made this to do something that is so tough to do. And, and I appreciate and thank you so much for that. No, just, just thank you again for all of your, your help and support through all of this. And, um, you know, we just had this conversation earlier, but I always appreciate uh, you know, the background and the information that you bring and, uh, and to help us do the best work that we can and to help support the great work that you're doing. So thank you so much. Okay, Trustee Clark. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to echo my colleagues' comments on like how amazed uh, I am that uh, you guys are able to create such a fulsome uh, you know, report that I can understand. That's fantastic. I uh, just, uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, it's a lot of money, but education is extremely important. And, uh, you know, digging into that surplus was not our, our, our first choice, obviously, but uh, our kids are important. So we, when you're a parent, you find a way. And as trustees and uh, people, uh, teachers, EAs, janitorial staff, you know, uh, superintendents, we have to find a way to do it. And I feel that we have done as good a job as, as, as we can with this. Thank you. Trustee Cameron. Thank you, uh, through you, Chair. Um, a big thank you to everyone. Um, I know it's um, a lot of work for our finance st department staff um, who spend hours and hours and hours uh, with many, many staff doing this together. Thank you to Controller uh, Alatisha Charles and all of your staff. I hope that you will pass it on to everyone, please. Um, I, if I was concerned about any one thing in the presentation, it would be the last slide that we saw that had to do with the difference in the per pupil allocation and how the second largest school board in the nation would be so far away from the largest school board um, in the nation and why we wouldn't be second on that per pupil allocation. Um, raises all kinds of questions and I, I'm hoping in the next school year that we could do something perhaps together um, to address that, our, our concerns about that um, with the ministry uh, to respectfully ask them to look uh, with us at finding a way to bridge that gap because that's money that's not going into a classroom, that's money not going to help children, that's money not focused on um, student achievement or um, student mental health. So we, we have lots of ways that we could spend that and I'm hoping that we will look at that because that was very concerning, disconcerting uh, to see that differential continue. Um, I'm grateful for uh, the board and the work that we did together. I agree with Trustee McDonald about how difficult a budget this is when we are you know, spending so much money from um, a source that had been um, reserved as a result of some excellent, excellent um, budgetary uh, thinking and work in, in the previous years. Uh, we needed to use some of that this year. Um, and, and thankfully, you did your amazing work historically that allowed us to make that move and uh, hopefully pass it in a few minutes uh, today. So thank you to everyone.
Thank you to everyone. Trustee Benjamin. Through you, Chair, thank you for giving me this opportunity to thank our director, uh, to thank uh, A.D. Gill and his team for all the wonderful work that you have done in presenting this budget. I know we have had several, a lot of challenges in the last four years, but I know we are going to go ahead and do a wonderful job in the next four years as a good team here of new trustees, as well as some experienced trustees. We are all going to work together and I'm sure we're going to uh, do well and put this board back where it belongs. Thank you. Trustee Bailey. The only thing I wanna say is thank you for your patience in um, all the entire team's explanation through that long, multiple budget sessions. Really appreciate it as a newbie coming in, not understanding a lot of um, the inner workings of the school board. So thank you very much for your time and patience. Trustee Alves. Thank you, Chair. Um, through you, I, I'll start by just thanking, um, thanking our director, staff, and, and uh, Associate Director Gil as well for your amazing work. One quick question that I did have, um, we were, when we were talking about dipping into the deficit for this budget, we, there was, uh, and forgive me if, I, if I'm not remembering correctly, but we were hoping to find out from the ministry if we could do, I think it was closer to 2% of, of the reserve versus the 1%. Did we end up finding that clarification? So through you, uh, uh, Chair Green, uh, the, the boards are allowed to uh, dip into the reserves of up to 1% of their annual operating budget without a ministry approval. So and now that we are into around approximately 1.5% of our operating budget uh, that, that we use in the reserve to balance the budget. So this budget, once approved by the board, is still subject to the ministry approval. So, so we will provide them all the information and we are very hopeful that, uh, that with the reserves we have, we will have the ministry approval. Through you, Chair. I, I am also very hopeful that we will have the ministry approval. Uh, thank you kindly for that. And just reiterate Trustee Cameron's point when it comes to our discrepancy in pupil funding. Uh, definitely would like to see us, um, you know, hitting where our weight should be as uh, the second largest board. Merci, thank you, and bravo. Great budget. I'm going to go online and I'm going to go to Trustee K. McDonald online first. Got any comments or questions? Okay. Thank you, uh, Trustee McDonald, for that. I'm going to go to Trustee Cole in line. Got any comments or questions? Not hearing any. Okay. It's okay. I'm in a hospital, but thank you. No. Okay. Trustee, thank you, Trustee Cole. Trustee Davy. Look for the net. I am doing that as we speak, but uh, I. That this one's amazing. I mean, we take next year, so uh, thank you. And uh, good year, and mother, we pay for it. Okay, thank you, Trustee Davies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, okay, so um, I, I don't think I need to uh, echo. Anything else? Because I think my colleagues have said it all. Um, to a director, Eddie Gill, uh, you know, the super team over here, um, you know, you have done an amazing job. And year after year, I've, you know, I was just talking about uh, when I first became the, the sport. And uh, I remember, you know, um, you know, uh, working with a team and balancing the budget and year after year. And uh, 
for me, it gets easier. But in terms of balancing the budget, it gets harder. And the fact is, one of the things that I want to say before I, I, I go to the motion is it is important as a board, we continue to advocate to the ministry. And I'm going to request that the director write a letter to the ministry requesting from the ministry to provide this board with equitable and proper funding. Because as a board, the second largest board in this province, it is unfair for year after year, we continue to see that we are at the lowest grade in terms of our per pupil funding. It's time that the government has support this board so that we can support our students. As trustees, we are responsible for student success and student achievement. We can't do that without having adequate staff um, and not just adequate staff, talented staff that are able to provide the tools that our student needs so that they can succeed, where they can compete in this global world. So we need to ensure that as a board, we are advocated and we're standing. So if it's going to take us to write 10, 15 letters, and maybe what we did when we first became trustee, Brad, we got parents involved in writing those letters with us to send to the ministry to say, it's time that this board uh, receive adequate funding. So director, on behalf of uh, the entire board of trustees, uh, we're going to request that you write a letter to the ministry um, yeah, um, to, um, to uh, provide this board adequately, uh, funding. And I'm going to ask one of my colleagues, if you, if I can have a mover and seconder for that, uh, trustee Joe Hall, trustee McDonald, all those in favor. All right. Thank you very much. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to trustee Cameron. Thank you, chair green. And thank you for the opportunity to present this motion, this budget motion for the board to consider. Be it resolved that the total consolidated operating expense budget for 2023-2024 of 2,038,222,380 dollars be approved subject to the Ministry of Education's approval and that the total capital budget for 2023-2024 of $118,051,537 be approved and that in accordance to balance, in order to balance the 2023-2024 operating budget, the use of $27,238,000 $121 from the working fund reserve be approved and that the 2023-2024 deficit recovery plan be approved and that the Peel District School Board continue membership on the Ontario Public School Boards Association and payment of the annual dues for 2023-2024 be approved. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Trustee Benjamin, uh, I'm going to request a recorded vote. So all those in favor of the budget, please stand. Yep. And those that are in line, please raise your hand. Hey, we'll start. Go ahead, Nicole. Thank you, yes. All good here. Yep. Yeah, everybody in lines raise their hand. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's a unanimous approval of this year budget. And we give ourselves a round of applause for that one. We have done it another year. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay. I'm going to, this time, I'm going to ask uh, Trustee, um, let me move down, Trustee Bailey and Trustee Benjamin to move adoption of the closed session report for me, which was about staff. 
All those in favor? Carries. Thank you. And uh, seeing that this is our final meeting until August, I just want to take the time uh, before we move adjournment just to say thank you to our director, uh, all our associate directors, uh, our legal governance team, dynamic team, uh, and her assistants, uh, to my colleagues, uh, to our staff and uh, our parents, our community members, uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your support, your dedication, and your commitment to this board. I also want to thank the groups that are advocates and continue to advocates to hold us accountable. And, uh, you know, uh, even though sometimes it can be challenging, but thank you for continue to believe in, uh, in our student and continue to, that we continue to seek pathway where we can work together to support our student. And as we look forward to September, I know that we got a lot of work ahead, but I believe that our team that we have, our senior team and the staff that we have in place, that we can do this together along with our communities, our parents and our guardians. We together will work together to ensure that this board is the best board in the province. So thank you for your unwavering commitment on behalf of this board. Enjoy your summer. Thank you very much, and I'll see you um, in August. Trustee Cameron is moving adjournment, and Trustee Clark is second that. All those in favor, thank you. Have a great summer.